Welcome to The Secret Witch Show, the podcast providing a safe and alchemical altar space of conversations which help powerful women escape a half-hearted, spiritless society and rediscover the freedom of living a wildly magical life. Every other week, we explore how to cast aside the wounds of shame, guilt and fear connected with fully being yourself, so you can grant yourself permission to stop hiding, ground soulfully back into your body, illuminate your whole soul desires, tend your soul, rediscover and reclaim your powerful gifts, express your magic and manifest your wildest alchemy. There's no better place to become who your heart longs to be. This is where we will guide you into liberation. I'm your host, Nicole Barton, and I'm so excited to dive in. Welcome, my loves, to the show, and I have been really excited to have reclaimed uh, Manifesting with the Moon event recently, so I would love to start off by inviting you to that. It is for you if you're a woman who is feeling stuck in a mundane life and really feeling the call to step into something a little bit more magical and learn to manifest the life that you desire, especially if you are feeling the call to being a healer, teacher or guide and you're possibly feeling terrified by that prospect. This is an event where we meet at new moon, although we are also meeting some full moons, but typically at new moon where we come together and harness the energy of the moon to really fully step into our power and magic. So it's a gorgeous community event and community, of course, being one of the eight elements of the Archetypal Apothecary Path, where we all gather and connect and share our intentions together. So, and of course, opening our hearts to what is possible. So if that feels like it's for you, please do join us. You can head to nicolebarton.co.uk forward slash moon ritual to find out more. On The Secret Witch Show today, I am diving into how our sensitivity and overwhelm and even our anxiety is a really deep sign that we were born to be magical ones, even though that may not actually feel like the gift it is. I share how sensitivity and overwhelm are secret calls to becoming healers, guides or teachers and how you can create life differently if you go inwards and do the work to heal the one common fear that comes up when women begin to lean in. In this episode, I explore the ways that sensitivity can show up, the typical constitution of a magical woman, and how shaming our sensitivity can have us not meet the needs that we need to meet in order to become healers, as well as how we can begin to meet these needs from love rather than rebellion. Let's dive in. Welcome, magical ones to our episode on how to reclaim the gifts in your sensitivity and overwhelm even when it doesn't appear to be a gift might seem like a bit of a strange title um but if there is one episode that's close to my heart is this one because magical women so shame their sensitivity and yet it is the one thing that actually makes them magical so we're going to dive into that in this episode and Yeah, just really first and foremost, if you're listening to this and you are feeling traumatized by how sensitive you are, there are ways to heal and liberate this so that you see this differently. There are ways to heal your overwhelm. And I know it's certainly something that comes up for a lot of the women that I work with, both one-to-one and in group crucibles as well um it's just such a big part of the picture of being someone who is here for magic i know when you're there in the mundane world in the modern crazy world trying to navigate like life in general that that is not going to seem like it is a gift your sensitivity or overwhelm it's it's just not it's just not going to be something that is seen that way So my hope is that you will lean into the episode and see something differently by the end. And I'd love to hear if you do what comes up for you. Um, The way that this can show up for women um, who are maybe just at the moment at the place of being in the mundane world, 
maybe just starting to dive into like being a highly sensitive woman or maybe just feeling this deep sense of overwhelm like if you're just here and you're like I live in the underworld I feel this overwhelm and I just so happen to be a secret witch (laughs) that's why I'm listening to this I felt called to listen to this then you are in just the right place the way that this will show up is typically through feeling overwhelmed through feeling exhausted through feeling this sense of like why am I just so different to everyone else why can I not cope with things that other people cope with why do I always feel so sensitive why do I always feel so exhausted and you're probably also likely to be a woman who ignores your needs maybe you don't even have an awareness of having needs um or maybe you know you do and you're kind of like rebelling against everything to try and get your needs met and just not able to um you will likely push through your body signals it will likely be that anxiety and overwhelm builds up in your chest and occasionally bubble over though you're trying to suppress it that anxiety that overwhelm will come out in a meltdown you might experience panic attacks and you probably will experience sensitivity and overwhelm as something negative not a gift at all um you might identify as a highly sensitive person you might identify as neurodivergent you might be autistic and suffer meltdowns like i do you might be um you might have ADHD or associate with being dyslexic or dyscalchic or some kind of neurodivergence there will be this sense of maybe being different from other people there will also potentially be physical illness that's manifesting from this so you might have headaches you might have um, some womb symptoms like endometriosis you might have exhaustion fatigue and as I mentioned overwhelm and anxiety so these are often ways that women will experience sensitivity and overwhelm and likely when you're in the midst of that which is typically you know the way that um, our magic often calls to us ironically as an initiation when you're in that you will not be feeling your sensitivity as a gift so just to make that super clear that is how it's likely showing up for you where you are and I have come to see, heal and alchemize for myself all of those things into creating a life for myself whereby my sensitivities are honoured, whereby I am embracing these deep sensitivities and the gold in them, the gift of them, whereby I am no longer suffering with physical illnesses. So that is what is possible for you as we journey into this, as you go into reclaiming the gifts in your sensitivity and overwhelm and it is essentially what makes women good at being healers teachers and guides so just to speak to that a little bit more i do see that magical women have a particular constitution i talk often about birth constitutions in the archetypal apothecary path that's really because one of the layers that we work with in this journey is that we come in born with a particular soul path and What I mean by that is um, you will have likely come into the world with a particular magical constitution. Archetypal phosphorus is often the constitution that women are born as. Now, if we think about phosphorus as a substance, you may or may not know, but it's the substance on the end of a match. If you think about how sensitive that is, that one strike against against the matchbox can ignite a match into flames. This is magical women, that deeply sensitive, just so you brush up against them even just slightly and there's instant flames. Magical women are open. This is this is what this constitution means. If you have this constitution, if you were born phosphorus, you are open. You are the one that was when you were younger, you were dreamy, you were open hearted, you were soft, you were sensitive, you were bubbly. You were the life and soul of the party. You were the ones mixing magical potions in the garden. There was this deep, open sensitivity in you that was beautiful that was really like people loved it it was like you were the the one that everybody had the big eyes everyone kind of you you know you were you lit up the room and this is phosphorus 
And there are also a few odd symptoms of a magical one who's phosphoric, like the fact that she loves thunderstorms. We illuminated that in our uh, secret um, secret witch group the other day. Um, either she loves thunderstorms or perhaps hates them. It's kind of a love-hate relationship with thunderstorms. These are really strange, rare and peculiar symptoms. And uh, Or she also loves ice cream. They also hate ice cream. There's a love-hate relationship with that as well. But those strange symptoms aside, generally the magical woman has phosphoric sensitivity. And as part of that sensitivity, and really the reason why she is so sensitive is that part of her gift, the soul gift that she was born here with, is to be open to other worlds. So this openness in order for her to be of service to others, of, the, of service to the world, for her to be her gift is actually needed this this openness is needed for her to be her gift for you to become a healer to become the teacher or guide that you're here to be you need this openness and yet it gets shamed there's this deep level of shame that when we try and fit ourselves as magical ones into a mundane world into a linear box into fitting in with society these sensitivities get shamed because these sensitivities mean that we have big needs more more needs than others it means that we have strange sensations that we notice that no one else does we're easily impacted by smells lights noise um you know other people maybe the labels on our clothes even uh, uh, you know rub our rub our skin and we're really sensitive to that this is me and i know it's you if you're listening so these things When we feel shame, this is something that is an invitation and this really is perhaps the most important invitation in our path is whenever we feel shame, there is an opening. There is an opening to deeper love, to deeper welcoming so that this shamed part of ourselves can reveal something to us that we haven't seen. And this sensitivity, this feeling different to everyone else, which is likely how you feel if you're a sensitive one, who feels overwhelmed, this wants love, this wants welcoming, this wants us to open our hearts, this part of us that has been shamed, that has been shoved down, that has been made to feel embarrassed of the fact that you are different, who's been made to feel that you're not ordinary, has been made to feel that you don't fit into society. Because it's when we start to be with that, it's when we start to welcome and love that, that sensitivity and overwhelm becomes able to be healed and alchemized into gold, into a gift. And when these sensitivities are shamed and ignored, it can lead to overwhelm, it can lead to anxiety, it can lead to panic attacks, it can lead to meltdowns, it can lead to emotional outbursts, which add layers of more shame when a woman judges herself. It's like we've, we've come into this world beautifully sensitive with these magical gifts and the world just doesn't find that acceptable. So we suppress them, we shame them, we hide who we truly are. And as we do that, as we suppress and layer over and ignore these sensitivities, we, our body and our emotions find ways to leap out and express what we actually want to express. I'm kind of shaking my hands here, like making, like gesticulating as to what happens, like this kind of coiled up energy within us, this life force gets shut down, this sensitive life force gets shut down and then out comes the suppressed emotions, out comes the emotional anxiety, the panic attacks, the meltdowns. And this is not a sign that there is something wrong with you. I know in the mundane world, people see people with anxiety, overwhelm, panic, and they're like, oh my God, let's fix this person. Let's heal, let's let's fix this. Let's add uh, medication in, let's suppress them even more. And oh, it breaks my heart because I see so much of this, like there's so many magical women who are being numbed even further by medications, by all sorts of things that that numb and suppress these little symptoms, these little signs of our body. Our body's going, no, no, I'm just having some overwhelm. I'm just having a bit of a meltdown, a bit of a panic attack because I'm fucking sick of being suppressed. My sensitivity is not wanting to be shoved down. I want to be honored. And instead of honoring it, we treat it as if it's something that needs to be fixed, something that's wrong, when it's actually an initiation into our magic. And 
essentially, it's a sign that our needs aren't being met. Because of this shame, because of this guilt, because of this sense of us being different from the rest of the world. And because our needs aren't being met, this sensitive woman then, who's like this beautiful rose that wants to bloom into the fullness of her magic and her healing power, instead of that, this woman is in a whirlwind of chaos in her mundane life, which just doesn't cater to her as a constitution. And she worries what others will think of her needs, what others will think of her outbursts, her wild emotions. And she fears this, one of the common three fears of a magical woman, which is approval. Magical women often suffer from the wounds of approval. It's one of the fears that shows up for, for women who are here to be healers. And there's this real fear of being seen as selfish, this fear of being in your feminine, in your magical feminine power, being judged as lazy. This is something that's such a deep fear in the witch. It's something that often, again, when we think back to witch wound burning times, where women were deeply sensitive, did actually deeply honour their sensitive wisdom and were burned and killed for it. So it makes sense that we would feel this deep sense of like, oh my God, I'm going to be outcast, I'm going to be killed, I'm just going to shut all this down. So it makes sense and I have gone through this and journeyed through this deeply. I even went through this more deeply recently where I realised I have so much more need to relax than others, than even I was giving to myself, providing to myself. That It is so important to fill my own cup first so that I can then fill others' cups. And usually sensitive women do it the other way around. They fill others' cups and ignore their own. And... There's this sense of that not being important to heal. Like there's this sense of like, oh, well, I'll choose that another time. And it is the most important thing to heal because it's literally impacting your life force. And the more that I have followed the calls of the feminine, the more I have created. So let's just say this now because this is so opposite to what we are taught. The more I have honoured my needs, my sensitivities the more I have created. That is so opposite to what we're taught. When I completely care for my needs, which I did the last, just to give you an example of this, the last uh, week or so, I have completely and utterly catered to my needs. I've sat out in, in the sun, I've just devoured gorgeous bougie bougie chocolates I have just been totally embodying the energy of the rose the archetypal rose which is very much that soft sensitive like slow soul paced archetype when I've been in the embodiment of my feminine when I've lounged around when I've lazed when I've allowed myself to relax when I have met all my needs for um being quiet and peaceful when I've met all my needs I have created 40 women to enrol for an event. Now that doesn't sound logical at all. But when we slow down and allow our deep sensitivity, we have access to a new level of body wisdom. We have access to a whole library of knowing that we can trust and we can take the aligned actions and trust the wisdom that we have within that just isn't allowed or isn't able to be heard when we're shoving down our sensitivities. So it's like so counterintuitive and yet it is the one thing that has had me create magically. And so often that's closed down to so many women being feminine seem selfish or they have this fear of being judged as that and they fear losing approval. They feel, well, I've got kids. How can I prioritise myself? You know, there's this sense of like, I I just can't choose this for myself. And the thing is, if we are truly here to be healers, teachers and guides and to create a life of more meaning, of more magic, to step out of the mundane, we have to choose that so that we can be of service. And this sensitivity, as I mentioned, in the mundane world, in the modern world, which values productivity and keeping up and forcing and hustling and pushing, sensitivity is just not welcomed. And we start to feel outcast, we start to deny our needs, we start to shame ourselves, we start to become overwhelmed by life. And there is a way to reclaim that because when we begin to see that these sensitivities have a purpose, that we have a different purpose, a more soul-led, magical purpose, 
than the rest of the mundane world which to be quite honest those people will if they're here to be if they're born with a constitution that suits the mundane that suits that way of being that's perfect for them but for us for magical ones who have this magical purpose we have to see that these sensitivities are a gift we have to see that our sensitivities are actually serving to the world and there's a real importance in meeting our needs because it allows us to be of deep and more meaningful service a bit like me last week and we awaken to the importance of honoring our needs and our sensitivities and and we allow ourselves to honor that and it really is the the kind of the work that we guide women through in this path is very much around feminine initiation and part of the feminine is learning to open and soften and be vulnerable and one of the things that I see when people do start to get a sense for like okay I've got needs often what can happen from the self-help lens is there can be this kind of swinging into the shadow pole from where they haven't honored needs at all and this may have been you maybe where you're at there can be this way of being like in shadow at one end of the pole every shadow pole has two ends we can either be completely ignoring our needs or we can swing into the opposite end of the pole and this is something i see happen quite frequently where we're just like absolutely rebelling against people not uh, people who um in terms of in terms of getting our needs met so this would be the woman who has spent so long not meeting her needs and realizes she's sensitive and then goes fuck you i'm going to take everything i need now and just does it in a really rebellious way and it's the energetic that i'm speaking to here it's that tense tight energy that you can feel behind that rebellion that also still wants healing that is also still although you're beautifully um honoring yourself there's like a there's like a fierce which isn't there's nothing wrong with being fierce but there's like a rebellious angry and again there's nothing wrong with sacred rage but there's like this place that it comes from that isn't a loving place and there is a way this is something that women often fear um is that kind of like having to rebel and we can spend so long in that good girl in the wanting approval that we can either just have enough of that and flip into rebellion but we can also stay in good girl and fear that rebellion. And I think what's hit clear to me that I have embodied for myself over the years, and it's, all, it's the true of all of the shadow poles, is that there is usually a third way. Both of those ends of the shadow poles are shadow. There is always a third way. And the third way of the feminine in meeting our needs for sensitivity is to be vulnerable. There is a way to ask for our needs to be met that is loving. And I had a team member recently who one day just stopped working. She didn't honor her needs, but she didn't ask for them to be met vulnerably. She just one day asserted really firm boundaries. And what I shared with her and what I share with you now is that there is a way to do that, to honor boundaries from love that isn't rebellious. And I realized this a few years ago because I journeyed through all of this myself that, um, that there is a new way and I'm also uh, autistic this neurodivergent this is why I've been highly sensitive in my life as well I always was I always felt like the odd one out and for a time I'd rebel against that to my family I'd be like sod it I'm just going to take what I need and one day when I discovered that I was neurodivergent and I was in the work of soul and in this in this path and I saw like this makes so much sense why I was so highly sensitive I had always felt like the odd one out, but I suddenly saw there was a new way to create this. And I sat my mum down and I explained to her, because it was when I go to her house and she has like all these like overwhelming things for a sensitive woman. I sat my mum down and where before I'd have been like, why do you do this? You know, um, I sat her down and I said, look, I've discovered that I am autistic. I'm highly sensitive. And I explained it all. And I courageously asked her to meet my needs when I visited her house. And she was so happy to. She completely understood. And it it was such a different outcome to what would have been created had I been rebellious and just been like, right, I'm just going to switch off these artificial air fresheners. Like there was a way of us co-creating it together. 
and she had all sorts of artificial air fresheners and things that would give me a migraine they'd have the tv on their phones blaring having a conversation over all of this because um it's just the the way that my family are uh, that can be feel quite chaotic to a sensitive woman and I asked them if they just turned the noises off if they wanted to talk and now I don't even have to ask there's just this beautiful honoring a meeting of me and my needs because the key to this part is is that I honored them for myself first and if we are if we are seeing this kind of dishonoring I think that's what I was pointing to the rebellion is that when we go into that shadow and so that the good girl where we're not 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 meeting our needs at all or there's this like dishonoring rebellion of others and there's a way if we're dishonoring one of the things i saw is if we're dishonoring others when we're in our overwhelm it's a sign that somewhere we're not honoring ourselves not truly so the beauty of this is when we are noticing ourselves go into that there's a there's a beauty of reclamation here that's available for healing of us really honoring and seeing our own needs like what is it that we are shaming for ourselves what is it that we are not expressing that we desire in order to meet our own needs and why is it that we're not doing that like what's the fear that stops us doing that i would guess 90 percent of the time it is approval the fear of not being approved of but go into that inquiry for yourself like why if you are not having your needs met if you are not um honoring your own needs first and foremost can you see that that that's a pattern in your own life and also why is that what's the fear that comes up think about asking for your needs to be met it might be that there's a fear of even asking like what's the fear in there because the more that we can start to begin to get into that into the nitty-gritty of the fears that are in there the more that we're able to see and love ourselves in that shadow and the beauty of what's here as a lesson is that we have to honor our own sensitivities as gifts for ourselves and when we do we learn that we can ask for our needs to be honored we learn to create life in a different way we learn to create from soul and when we get vulnerable and honor ourselves people respond lovingly and honor us too like i say before that i'd have been cross as to why my needs were never met i'd have been shaming my sensitivity i'd have been demanding that my needs were met and now i don't even have to ask sometimes and my king just honors my needs because he longs to provide me what i desire there's a great book called the queen's code because this can show up a lot um particularly in relationships where with men and women where a sensitive women just feel that they cannot ask for their needs to be met and they cannot honor themselves because of the fear of what their husband will think and there's a great book called the queen's code uh, there's there's also a really common one that comes up actually and i know this is common and i also have experienced it myself whereby if you think about like the woman who's like sat there waiting for flowers from her from her man and just thinks well he should know what i need he should know what i need and we're assuming as alison armstrong says in the queen's code we're assuming that men are like the perfect woman we're assuming that they know exactly like other women would know what we need like there's this attunement that women have to people's needs i think and Yet men are completely different animals to women and they're motivated to provide for what we desire. They're motivated by provision, by being the provider. You think about the cavemen, they went out and they hunted the food and they brought it home because they're there with this this inbuilt kind of drive to provide. And if they don't know what it is that we want them to provide, it's very difficult for them to provide it's just like this catch-22 whereby they want to naturally provide and if we're vulnerable and able to openly express from the heart what our needs are likely they will meet them because that is how they're wired and and when we do this from a loving place there's this real beauty that opens up um so just to share just to share a bit more on that the thing is though what's needed is for us first and foremost to honor our needs for ourselves so a deep inquiry that i'd love to invite you into is what are your needs what are your needs that you are not meeting what do you need and there's something also here around this is something i work with women in my crucibles is there's something about a true need versus a shadow need which is very difficult actually to illuminate yourself 
Um, so just be aware and conscious of the fact that some needs come from fear and some needs are true fears. But come up with this list of what your needs are truly. If you truly honestly look, what are your needs? Because there's this deep level of honouring of those for ourselves that's needed in order for us to be able to even create other people to be able to honour them. But it is also really important to notice that sensitivity shows us that we have gifts. Because if we've got this level of high sensitivity, you'll also likely be a woman who can feel spirit, who can sense more than just five senses, who has like this extra access to other worlds. That is ultimately why you are so sensitive, because that is the gift that you were born here with. You might have gifts as a medium, you might have gifts as a healer or a soul guide or some kind of spiritual teacher. That is why you have this sensitivity. But because you have spent your life so overwhelmed, you'll likely have ignored and shamed these gifts. Or you'll have seen that you have these gifts, but you're going to avoid in sharing them because it feels overwhelming. It feels terrifying to open to these gifts when you're already so overwhelmed and exhausted and burned out by modern day life. And that's how magical women tend to feel when they're sensitive, but their sensitivity is in shadow. They will feel burned out. They will feel exhausted. They'll feel overwhelmed. And they'll feel this deep call to being a healer. But then it feels like it's like overwhelming, like to add another layer of like, okay, now I'm here to heal someone else on top of all the stuff that I'm already doing. It's like, how is that going to work without a layer layer of healing for ourselves? First and foremost, a layer of reclamation of our gifts. This is why I talk about in our archetype apothecary journey, my point of view is that often women are taught that we can just go and train in Reiki or aromatherapy, or whatever our modality is, and then we can just immediately go and create a business from it. And what women are doing is they're going into their sensitivity and their gifts and they're training in them and they're starting to explore them, but without having fundamentally healed the deep wounds that will stop them from actually actualizing that in the world. There's a level of promises of quick fixes, um, from other modalities that are like, okay, training this and then off you go, where there's this whole other piece in between, like feeling that call to your gifts and actually expressing them in the world, where there's a healing of ourselves, there's a healing of our approval wounds, there's a healing of our wounds around our sensitivity and seeing that as a gift. There's a healing of us being able to ask for our needs to be met in order for us to live our purpose. And so my point of view is that, yes, there are these quick fixes on offer out there, which is much the same as the, you know, the quick fixes of the antidepressants and the, the, the medications to numb and suppress us when we're overwhelmed and anxious. Those are quick fixes much in the same way as the quick fixes of like, come and learn to be a healer in a day. When the reality is to become a healer is a journey of three years. It's a journey of three levels. I talk about my my point of view is that women need to go through three layers of um, of becoming a healer. It really is a becoming of being a healer where we heal ourselves as healers. We discover our gifts. We discover the gifts that are usually hidden in the shadow wounds, like the sensitivity, the gift of the sensitivity that's that's hidden and shrouded in a load of shadow. We discover our unique expression, a unique medicine, who we're here to be. And then we learn the tools to express those into the world as a business. Those are the three layers that I teach in our archetypal apothecary path. And it's because there's a real importance to healing ourselves, which is the step that's often skipped. There is a real need for us if we are here to be healers. a real need for us if we are struggling with sensitivity with overwhelm with anxiety with panic attacks with all the manifestations of the shadow of sensitivity there's a real need for a healing journey there and there are eight elements that i guide women through on each of these three layers um which is very much around healing and opening Um, In particular, in relation to the ones that I've just been speaking to, there's an opening first and foremost. This is one of the elements. Opening is opening to seeing that 
there is a new way to see sensitivity, opening to being sensitive, opening to allowing our sensitivity to be accessed, which means, of course, healing and alchemizing the places where we've numbed our sensitivity because we can't fit into the world. There's a whole journey there of opening. Embodiment, very much connecting to the body to see what our needs are. Half the time, we can't tell what our needs are without going into our body to see what's being revealed about where we're not coping with our lives, about where we're not feeling that our needs are being met, and about also tuning into the desires that are held in our body. And there's the the a third element is liberation. There are eight. I'm not going to go into all of them now. Just the ones that are particularly relevant to what I've been talking to. But liberation is very much that healing alchemy, that liberating of the old stories around our sensitivity being a pain, our sensitivity being unwelcome, our sensitivity being annoying, having us outcast, having us not loved. There's a whole piece there to journey with. It's one of the elements is liberation healing and there are many more there's a whole piece around um owning our power manifesting uh, soul alchemy there's lots of other elements and also um, community as well but those are the ones that are particularly relevant to this point this part this kind of where you are at this point of sensitivity and overwhelm and this really is it's so hard when we're sensitive to open to go into our bodies to to liberate this and there's this feeling that we're going to be obliterated if we're vulnerable if we open our hearts if we allow ourselves to be with our sensitivity to see what's truly there to see the extent to which we've shamed it and suppressed it but it's helpful to know that there is a way to do that that is aligned with soul and it's really that And also the way to do this aligned with soul that allows us to step into our gifts, to step into actually healing ourselves and coming to a place and creating a way of life that is honouring of our needs so that we can become a healer to others. And that requires us to heal ourselves first of all the wounding around sensitivity. But it is so possible. And part of the opening part of the path is opening to that possibility for yourself opening to seeing that there is a way to view your sensitivity differently so i'm hoping that this episode has been deeply healing for that already even if you're still like well yeah i hear you and i'm still resistant because <laughs> i know that is also where so many of my women are i am going to leave you with an inquiry so i would invite you to just maybe spend some time actually just spend some time honoring yourself like let's go into this let's just first and foremost look at where do you shame your sensitivity where do you notice that this is something that has been a pattern for you where have you shoved down your needs where do you where do you even start to feel overwhelmed like are there any themes to what seems to overwhelm you And if there are, what needs do you have that are in those themes that are due to being sensitive but that you're not honouring because of the shame? Do you have a sensitivity to noise? Do you need time alone? Do you have a sensitivity to smells? Do you, you know, what is it? How does your sensitivity show up? And can you honour that for yourself? Can you find ways to just begin to lean in start to allow yourself to ask for your needs to be met to be vulnerable in that Hmm. i'm going to leave that one there it feels like that's complete so i would love to hear from you what came up in that particular episode what do you feel around your sensitivity how do you see it ties into your gifts i would love to know if you are aware that you have gifts that require you to be sensitive and what has been your key takeaway if you want to share that with me please do join in our group the secret witch society on facebook you can find it by searching secret witch society i'd love to hear i'm always um really uh yeah lit up when i hear from women who've been listening 
and you are so so welcome to join us there you're also welcome to email me info at nicolebarton.co.uk because i love to hear from women who are journeying i do often hear from women who've been listening to the podcast and it fills my heart so please do share and go with all the love for yourself go gently love again is part of our path it's very much um although yeah it's part of that opening part of the path really loving opening so please do remember to honor that for yourself as you go into this and yeah i will speak to you next time Mm, what a gorgeous episode here are my takeaways Being a magical woman naturally means you are sensitive and when we try to fit into the mundane world, we can shame ourselves for that. This is largely due to the fear of losing approval and because of this fear, often women don't meet their needs and can become overwhelmed. It can mean that women who are here for a more magical purpose experience panic, exhaustion and anxiety, which in the mundane lens will be treated as if it needs to be fixed. It is really an initiation into your gifts. This is a call to healing, especially if you are feeling the call to become a healer, teacher or guide, because if you choose to heal and honour your needs for yourself, you can create the life of your dreams from your deep sensitivity. Your sensitivity is really a gift because it's what allows you to communicate with other worlds and be open to spirit. It's really what allows you to access your gifts. If you'd like to get the show notes and links for everything we've chatted about in this episode, head to www.secretwitch.co.uk. If you know a secret witch who would love this episode, please share with them to help them liberate themselves. And so you don't miss out on next week's episode, head to your podcast app of choice and hit subscribe. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next time.